Hello, my soccer universe. <laughs> what an evening. Uh, everything delivered. <laughs> everything delivered yesterday. It was an awesome evening to watch and just be in front of the TV and just watch soccer. And yeah, we uh, had an awesome day of uh, other fronts as well. Rather successful. So, very, very, very good. Um, really, I mean, what was in there yesterday? I, you know, when I'm watching, I often have in my back, back of my what will be the headline? What will be the headline uh, that I put on top of my video now? Uh, I think it changed three or four times. Um, I think the early contender was uh, Euro Slapstick because the early games, the amount of ridiculousness in goal scoring or, miss or failing to score was just a uh, high, high, high level. I mean, uh, talk Morata, talk Lewandowski, talk actually the first Sweden goal, talk of course Dubravka uh, and then another own goal in there. Uh, I was all in there. It was just special in many ways. So that was number one. Uh, the second headline then came rather early uh, in there. You know, I was hoping kind of maybe that uh, Euro slapstick. That I, I would really be happy to have that as a headline. And Hungary scoring Germany suddenly out and it stays that way. So I'm thinking, hmm, Germany out. Is that the headline? Uh, in the end, with Portugal going, starting in third, going up until first, falling back to second, then going to fourth, going back into um, third. Uh, they had every possible position within the 90 minutes available. I think a wild ride sums it up really, really, really well. I think the whole evening was a wild ride. Um, and almost anyone could have qualified. Yeah, Slovakia probably never really had a chance, but that was a wild ride yesterday. Uh, and there were great games in there uh, as well. I mean, uh, maybe the Spain game didn't deliver in terms of suspense, but I mean, I saw Sweden, Poland, I saw France, Portugal, which was a pretty good match. I mean, yeah, dodgy refereeing, which contributed to the wild ride. And then the other question is, which jersey am I gonna wear? I mean, the only uh, I could have worn uh, Spain, I could have worn Poland. But in the end, because of the wild ride, I decided on Portugal. And also, to top it off, Cristiano Ronaldo match no Ali Day. I think he has more uh, caps to do so, but you know, it's a Cristiano record that he's probably cherishing quite a lot. So. Let's jump into it. I mean, it would be now really, really nice to go through and show all the per uh, permutation. I think I'm going to go game by game. Um, Slovakia, Spain, honestly, that was one-way traffic, as was expected. But now Spain scored. Um, and they even missed a penalty because... Uh, no, no, not missed. I mean, the penalty foul, Duda clearly takes out... Uh, Spanish attacker, uh, I think it was Koke, um, and then Morata steps up and <laughs> with Spain, I think with the five panels in a row, and I really feel with Morata. He is the butt of every single joke uh, about the Spanish team, how he cannot convert. Uh, you gotta feel bad for him. But then, you know, when you thought all the spotlight is on Morata failing to score again, um, Moreno takes a shot there, hits the crossbar, it goes up and Dubravka says, let's put Morata out of his misery. He went to tap it over uh, the bar and taps it into his own net. I think um, in his, the only thing in his defense, it looks ridiculous, of course. But the one thing in his defense uh, is that, you know, the sunlight, it, it was just at the point where the sun and the shade were. So yeah, but still, unforgivable. And then uh, Laporte scores his first go uh, goal for Spain, and I think with that the game was settled. The next, I mean, uh, Sarabia, I think was probably the game or uh, the man of the match uh, by uh, scoring the third, which was a really nicely played goal, and then assisting uh, two more, uh, the Dubravka on goal, and then also for the one by Ferran Torres, who had just come on. It was his first touch, and who did he come on for? Morata adding to uh, the <laughs> comedy of it all. And then um, 
another great impact sub and that was another thing there were quite a few impact subs uh, and one uh, substitution that actually initially didn't work out um Paul Torres came came out also with his first touch he helps assist Kuchka's own goal Kuchka's uh yeah bad clearance five nil for Spain and I think no one is talking about Spain not scoring anymore however um Slovakia made it a little bit easier and once this Spain team gets rolling <laughs> and now everyone is saying, yeah, uh, Luis, Luis Enrique is probably the most experienced coach in there, although Mancini, I think, will take the second uh, spot in that. So maybe we have to look into Spain. The problem is, yeah, we will see the bracket. We will see the bracket. Uh, Sweden, Poland. It was a must win for Poland. If Poland wins, they actually threw Sweden, was already qualified as far as I, I knew. Um, but it didn't start well for Poland. That, another slap. There's that first goal by Sweden. The way Isaac falls down and the ball then hits him, Valfonga hits him on his heel and that's why the Polish defender couldn't clear it and goes past the ball and the ball falls to Forsberg who can make his second goal of the tournament. Unbefriggin-livable what was happening there. Uh, even more unbelievable was what happened in the 20th minute. Uh, I think a corner kick, or a free kick came in, Lewandowski heads it really nicely onto the ground, it goes on the crossbar. Bounces back to him, where he, all he needs to do is compose himself and pull it in. No, he hits it on the crossbar again. Then it comes again back to him and it goes through his leg, legs. I mean, Poland's tournament is summed up in that one scene. Uh, but at least Lewandowski uh, made up for the autos miss. But I think if he scores there, Poland has a true chance. I mean, Poland basically a, f a really bad first half against Slovakia that they were about to turn around and then the Kekalikovia get sent off yeah was rather crazy uh, and then those misses by Lewandowski I mean there's your tournament right there uh, Poland actually tried to press forward but then another impact sub uh, Kulusevski came, came, came on and with his first action more, more or less he dances on the box plays it Really nicely to fall for Speck, who sweetly cur uh, curls it in. 59th, you think, yeah, game settled. Sweden is through, Sweden win the group. No, because uh, a, a really nice pass by Zielinski to uh, Lewa, Lewa Lewandowski. There are three defenders, one goes to her, to her, to her, to her, to her, to kind of secure, but Lewandowski. I mean, what a sweet shot. This was vintage Lewandowski, absolutely in the corner. Wonderful goal. Game on again. Few minutes later, Sverdjok uh, equalizes. However, he was just by a fraction of side. Then Poland really giving it their all. Um, however, Sweden also, especially this Kulusevski guy. Uh, I mean, we know him from Serie A. Uh, really kept things a little bit uh, interesting and was always this thorn, thorn side for Sweden but Poland really going going forward and it just when he thought it there's not much going uh, to happen Farankowski with a nice cross and I don't know what the Swedish defense is thinking yeah we need to double up on Sverdjok and leave Lewandowski all alone by himself who can pull it into the net 2-2 Hmm. And at this point, uh, that, that, that actually would have will, will meant that Sweden is only second in the, in the group. And then we had this finely balanced thing with Sweden, and it was at that moment already clear, if not perfect, winning the group definitely gives an advantage uh, there. Uh, and Poland is pushing forward, however, they cannot find a, a goal, and in, in the end it's Kulusevski, another really nice assist. I think in the last few few, 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 few minutes, especially Sto Stoppage, there was one chance for... Uh, one small chance for, for Poland, but I think then Sweden played home uh, ni nicely and Klassen gives Sweden the win in the group. Ups Unbelievable. Already that would have made for great drama. It is all topped off. I mean, if you look at the bare results, uh, what happened in Group F, everything stayed the same as before. But the road there, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Germany-Hungary, first of all, rainbow uh, controversy. Um, yeah, you if not, um, how do I say, being a little bit stuck up and kind of missing the point in my way. Um, I understand they're arguing, you know, uh, if it was planned that the uh, Allianz Arena is being lit in rainbow colors ahead of uh, Hung Hungary passing the law, um, I think they would have had a bigger case 
kind of as a response, I can maybe see the line of questioning. But you already had this with Manuel Neuer wearing the rainbow colored captain's armband. Just go with it. Just go with it. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I know you, you don't want this disgruntled Hungary. So yeah. <sighs> tough times, tough, tough, tough times. And I think that overshadowed that match ad because of that. And because already, you know, I mean, Hungary again had great support there. However, I certain elements in that fan base, I mean, there are definitely ultras uh, there who are not all that friendly. I really felt for this Hungary team because they really gave it their all uh, and probably would have deserved to move on from this group as the rank outsiders. However, then uh, the over picture of Hungary, especially politically, kind of makes it harder to root for Hungary itself, which I personally find a shame in many ways. Uh, and I can say, you know, there's a generalization, I don't want to, but whenever I dealt with people of Hungary, it was not that often. I always felt them uh, quite nice. Uh, I, I never had any negatives, even with, um, you know, the Hungary team. I know they are the eternal rival of Austria, but I, I always feel that Hungary is a team that should actually be at a European Tour tournament, just given the history. In any case, back to, to the game. Hungary takes the lead early on, and that actually ignited that group, because the one thing that Germany could not do is lose to Hungary. If they lose, they are most likely out. There was another <laughs> thing in there where even with a loss, they would not have been out. So, a uh, wonderful cross by Salai to uh, 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 Scholai. And I probably switched them now around. I think it was Scholle to Salai. Scholle to Salai, I think that's how it's called. Uh, Hungarians, please correct me. Uh, really great header, makes it 1-0. Uh, the one thing I was wondering, why is Germany playing in black? This was the one matchup I did not expect yesterday, really. And it didn't make for better watching. I suspect after Puma took a stamp on the first match day, Adidas said, okay, we need to really push this black uh, Germany kit because there might not be many uh, options to wear it. Ha 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 ha, soon you will wear it, most likely. Um, not much that I can tell you else from the game. I mean, I know that Germany had a lot, a lot of possession, uh, had chance, uh, maybe even a goal this is allowed. They get their equalizer in the 66th when um, I think it was a free kick from Kimmich where uh, Gulaci just flies under, uh, almost right behind him, heads it towards the goal uh, and Havertz then into the empty, empty net. However, then uh, the no impact sub is because Havertz came off and Müller came on and then with eight touches of kickoff, Schäfer, after a really nice uh, Pass by Zalai, he just sees that um, Neuer is coming out, shave ahead, head, 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 head in it. 2 1 for Hungary, Germany at that moment out again. I Yes, at that moment they are out again. Yep, <laughs> I needed to check them in. It was just uh, crazy, crazy, or, or maybe just not yet. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk, 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 talk about it. Then uh, Musiala came on, that was a huge impact of the, the young guy really giving. Um, a lot of trouble to the Hungarians uh, and in, in the end it's his action that kind of enables uh, the equalizer by Goretzka who just uh, slams it home and then celebrates by showing the heart uh, in response to the Hungarian law and, and, and so which in many ways was the picture of the evening uh, kind of Germany really uh, rallying behind uh, equality for everyone as it actually should be and for once Germany even though playing in black uh, you know trying to show a different uh, face to the world than everyone wants to remember them for World War II and so on I think Germany has come a long 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 way from that and there we are at the final game Portugal France and I said I'm uh, <laughs> Portugal's wild ride in there. Uh, it was the Ronaldo Benzema game. Uh, it was a game of penalties. It was over a really good game, I have to say, with uh, France actually starting well, uh, Mbappe having a good chance, but then actually Portugal uh, being in there. I actually want to claim that this is probably the game that was also the game of the probably two most talented sides in the tournament. Yeah, Italy can say something, England can say something, Belgium. But I have to have to say the overall quality on the pitch is pretty amazing uh, for both teams. 
Um, so yeah, the you know the, the chance for uh, fail to uh, um, 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 but Paul Porter got themselves in, in in the game, and then uh, you know I was actually thinking, will this go fizzle out into a draw in in in, in a way? But then Lahos decided to stay a step in. I have to say, uh, the way Yuris comes out uh, and takes down, I think it was Pere, uh, Danilo. Danilo, he hit, he, he, he takes out. To me, it's a clear penalty. You cannot come out. I mean, yes, you maybe hit the ball, for, but honestly, the way he, 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 he comes out with his elbow into the face, I mean, it's not that he comes straight out, he really goes with the elbow in, in, into the face. To me, a penalty. Ronaldo steps up, makes the goal. Um, that France then are gifted a penalty. Yes, a great pass to Mbappé, but the way Mbappé runs into uh, Semedo, he's just looking for the contact and to feint a foul. And that's the one thing I, I think everyone was so uh, high on Mbappé after the World Cup, uh, how level-headed, how like, likeable a guy he is. He's an amazing footballer, but I think his tendency is to fall. He directly goes into the school of Neymar, and that is for me a little bit of a downer in many, many, many ways. However, the panel is given, it's to the VAR. I honestly have to say, this was one where I think if you look, look at it, no, you don't need to give it. Uh, Mozama equalizes, and at that point, France goes top of the group. So it was Portugal first. Uh, it very first played Germany out, we, as, as, as we said, and then um, now it flip-flops France ahead of Portugal uh, and Hungary and Germany. However, this was also dangerous for Portugal because if Portugal would concede, they would go last quiz because then they're level points with Germany and head-to-head. A really nice scene at halftime before we go into the second half when Bonzema and Ronaldo were just uh, hugging each, each other and exchanging messages. You know, ex 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 exchanging words, not messages. Uh, because, you know, they played so long for Real Madrid together. It was really nice to see that. And no one had a problem with that. Eden Hazard. I'm just saying that. Uh, right after the half, brilliant pass by Pogba into Bonzema, who scores uh, the goal to make it 2-1 for France. Portugal in fourth place. Yes, they check, had to check on VAR, uh, but it stood. So Portugal needed to do some, 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 something. Then Germany equalizes, uh, which means that Portugal is again saved. <laughs> it's just madness. It is madness because suddenly Hungary is in fourth place. Uh, and then they get a penalty because Kuhn 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 does, 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 does keep the hand to himself. At Think pro pretty much at the same time Hungary scores because again the fun thing is that whenever Hungary scores you could see the entire stadium celebrating because of course the Hungarians wanted to know that even it was nuts. Uh, Ronaldo converts and now he is level with Ali Day as he said and of course he celebrated accordingly and we had a nice penalty shul 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 game. In the end. France could have well won that one. I mean, there was a brilliant uh, chance, I think, by Pogba, then a great save um, uh, twice, I think, one on Griezmann, uh, where um, uh, Patrio, Rui Patricio came really through. And then very late, laid down the clearest penalty foul of them all by Bruno Fernandes. The way he steps on, uh, uh, on uh, who was it? I want to say Kim Pempe, but I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't believe it quite. That was the clearest penalty of them all, and it's not given. And VAR doesn't step on it. And uh, I also have to say, clear foul of the Austrian uh, broadcast. I needed to watch Austria because German, in, on German TV they always showed the other games. Uh, and uh, the two games that I wanted to see were in, in Germany. Uh, I think around this 2-2, they kind of said, yeah, and Lo uh, referee Laos is really making himself a resume to uh, go for the final. <laughs> with those glaring penalty mistakes. Yes, it's not all his, his mistake. And then not giving that penalty and kind of way waving off and, and Varnas now stepping in. That I did not get. In the end, it is Portugal who goes out and... Uh, uh, not Portugal, Hungary. That goal goes out in Portugal, uh, making it into third spot. Um, so let's summarize the whole, whole madness. Spain, 
5-0 uh, over Slovakia, Sweden 3-2 over Poland, Germany and uh, Hungary as well as Portugal, France and 2-2. Two, two. Which means that the final standings in the in this group is Sweden wins the group, Spain overtakes Slovakia, finish in second place, as was kind of expected. Um, and then France, Germany, Portugal it stays all the same. However, uh, it was a wild ride to get there, as I said uh, many times before. Now, as for third place team, Ukraine was already qualified uh, for that. Um, uh, for an, an next round with Slovakia, uh, finishing in third, so uh, they had their spot already. And then it was basically down whether uh, Portugal loses by a lot that Finland could go in, which never was like like them. So Finland and Slovakia, the worst third place team, to go out. And yeah, I think it sounds about right there. Uh, as for projections, uh, we don't need to project actually much except for uh, the bracket. What a hell of a bracket do we have. The upper part, and it's again so imbalanced and I'm a little bit annoyed, but the upper part clearly takes the game. I mean, we have Belgium, Portugal already. Huge matchup. Port Portugal was really hoping to get in for the Netherlands slot, but uh, that was not helped by Ukraine suddenly. And you know, it was it was not uh, that was uh, really risky. So we have Belgium, Port Portugal, Italy, Austria, and France, Switzerland should be easy games for the favorites. Um, however, they are 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 the upper bracket. We have Croatia, Spain. Yeah, memories of 2016. That is not an easy game for Spain at all. Um, so we have Spain against France, projecting quarters, Italy against Belgium. I mean, for, um, more or less all the favorites are up there. Uh, <laughs> Belgium to make it to the final over France. I know this is if all the favorites go through according to the ratings that I have. This bracket sure is not going to hold this way. Um, Sweden, Ukraine, I mean, will be the, as we'll see, will be the last game. Um, it's probably the unglamorous matchup. England, Germany. Whoa, what a great matchup. I mean, that's the biggest matchup of them all in there. Uh, and then the Dutch, I mean, what a sweet draw. And I, I even have a feeling that they might not make it Netherlands against the Czechs. Wales against Denmark, uh, kind of uh, the feel good derby, but Wales suddenly. Uh, kind of the, the bad guys because the, every, every, everyone's far for Denmark. I can well see, although I have the Dutch now in the semi final, I can well see uh, Denmark going through. I'm not sure if I would go Sweden over either England or Germany, although it is probably in there as well. So there could be a Scandinavian semi final, but if you look down there, England must be so happy because this Germany team seems to be ripe for the taking. Yes, England was not calm, 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 convincing, but I think England definitely can do something as Germany and we have a little bit more vis uh, visitors in, at Wembley too. And then the route to the final seems like wide open because Sweden, I think you would be favored over Sweden to do something, uh, despite there being quite some good talent in, 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 in there. At Wembley, over the Dutch, all the Danes, you, uh, you are favored over Wales easily and then uh, you have the final. I think this is really, really made for England in many, many, many ways. Um, as for favorites, it clearly re reflected. I mean, yes, with the upper bracket so loaded, so suddenly Belgium is not the big favorite anymore. France also not that much any, any, anymore. See how Denmark rises over poor Portugal, who really got hit now because they have to go through uh, Belgium, Italy, France, again and then England. I mean, that's a really, really, really tough road. I don't think that Portugal they have the talent, but I don't think Portugal will repeat. That's really, really, really tough. At least France and Italy have easier matchups to come in. Um, speaking of easy matchups, we know that Italy, of course, plays Austria. And I, I just have, have to level it. Austria, not because of ability, but because of the side of the bracket. They, they already hit with it. Italy. They will have to play that against Belgium. The same part, uh, path as poor Portugal, in many ways. They have absolutely no chance of making it anywhere. If you would have finished with a draw against Ukraine, you would play against Sweden. And it might be a whole lot easier for you to move forward. Uh, it's also one of those things where, uh, yes, Austria played well and showed for once what they are a capable of playing. But with a little bit level-headedness, you take this third spot and you, are, you can actually go for a deep run in many, many ways. Uh, absolutely crazy. Sweden, of course, also a big boost. Denmark, as I said, or 
Port Portugal and Ukraine only because uh, they are on the nicer side of the draw. So these are the round of 16 matchups in order and spoiler alert, I have actually been a little bit looking if I can get tickets for Italy, Austria because uh, a colleague in, uh, I have a colleague in England where I could stay, blah, 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 but there's no way that Austrians can get tickets because of, um, you know, um, Karen, 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 and so on. And it would have set me back for a lot of euros as well that my wife quick, quickly said, think of how many jerseys you could buy for that. Oh yeah, all right. Uh, in any case, yes, I'm Austrian. I would not mind also doing something, but I will support Italy in that one. I want Italy to really go far in this tournament, maybe even win it. So I'm not for Austria. I might be uh, not entire, but I think I will be 55, 44, 45 it Italy in there. Um, it really starts, it really says, it says, well, I mean, Netherlands, Czech, Czech Republic, that's the bogey team for the Netherlands. The Czechs always can do some, 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 something against the Dutch. Belgium, poor Portugal is, I think, a must watch, will be a boring nil nil draw, probably. Croatia, Spain, I think, is really interesting. France, Swiss, Switzerland should be straightforward. And then England, Germany, as I said, the game in Glasgow is probably the one downer. Boy, yeah, it was a long video, but this really deserved it all. It was a great night to watch soccer. In any way, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know who you think will win this tournament. What do you think about the bracket? I'm a little bit uh, annoyed that we have another lopsided one. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.